a company's real estate is one of its largest assets as well as one of its largest expense items. And companies looking to ex- to acquire more real estate, whether through expansion, relocation, or just a new acquisition, need to understand, however, that the commercial real estate industry is full of potential conflicts of interests. And unfortunately, the sad reality is that most of these conflicts of interest favor the landlord or the owner, not the end user or occupier or tenant who will be using the space. In this video, we explore this conflict of interest and offer some suggestions for how to make sure that the owner of the business will be represented well as they go forward in their real estate acquisition process. So in this video, we're going to provide an overview of the commercial real estate industry. We're going to explore the idea of dual agency and conflicts of interest, and then offer some suggestions for what can a tenant do to make sure that their interests are fairly represented. One of the key realities of the commercial real estate industry is that landlords are in it to make money and the tenants are not. To compound this, most of the transactions are very, very complex with many multiple page documents. And landlords make their money from their tenants, primarily through the rents charged for the leased space and also for some amenities that might be charged against the, the tenant as well, such as parking or spa or health or fitness centers that might be in the particular facility. All of the income generated from the property, less the reasonable necessary operating expenses that are incurred from operations, is what's called the net operating income or NOI. The NOI divided by the value of the property is also called the capitalization rate or cap rate. Those are the two of the key metrics for evaluating how well the landlord is doing for that particular property, the NOI and the cap rate. The summary of all those rents generated from the property as well as the other income produced by the property is what's called the rent roll. The rent roll is a key determination for the landlord. The more the income the landlord can generate from the property and the smaller the expenses that are incurred by the property or the more expenses that can be passed on to the tenants, the higher the net operating income. The larger the NOI, the more money the landlord is bringing home each month, and the larger the NOI, the higher the cap rate, making the property more attractive to investors. To put it succinctly, the more money that a commercial real estate landlord can generate from its tenants, the better it is for the landlord. This is not to impugn the integrity of landlords as a whole. It's just simply pointing out the fact that the landlord's business is to make money from their tenants. And the complexity of commercial leases makes things more complicated for the tenant. I've said before, and I'm saying it again here, that leases nowadays can be 50, 60, 70 pages long. There are uh, also, agreements that are attached to the leases, such as parking agreements and signage agreements, uh, in many cases that further complicate things. For example, commercial real estate leases can contain language with words such as estoppel certificate, subordination and non atonement agreement, triple net leasing, etc. These words can have significant impact on how much the tenant is going to be responsible for, both from a rent perspective, as well as liability and risk. And commercial real estate leases often contain pretty complicated rent structures. Full service gross is probably the most simple, which is where the tenant's usually just writing one check, but then you can get into triple net leases where the tenant's gonna be responsible for a whole lot of other expenses. And some of these are not exactly spelled out very clearly in the, uh, in the lease document. So while the landlord is pretty familiar with these concepts and these terms, they are pretty overwhelming and, and daunting to folks who are not in the commercial real estate industry on a day-to-day -day basis. A third reality about the commercial real estate industry is that the likelihood is that the tenant is not in the commercial real estate business. As a result, the tenant's going to have unequal bargaining power in dealing with landlords and negotiating commercial real estate transactions. Most landlords have their attorneys draft the 
documents and the landlords are familiar with the terms in the leases and the lease, other lease documents and usually have representation from a broker, uh, perhaps an accountant and an attorney in negotiating the deal. But it's very common for tenants to have no representation in the commercial lease negotiations. And it's very common for tenants to sign whatever lease the landlord or the landlord's representative puts in front of the tenant. The tenant may be great at running their own business, whether it's a restaurant or a medical practice or law firm or manufacturing plant, whatever. But these factors contribute to a reality, again, of the commercial real estate industry that tenants are often sitting ducks for landlords. And to make the commercial real estate leasing situation even more challenging for commercial tenants, the commercial brokerage industry has what's called dual agency. But as we'll see here in a minute, dual agency cr often creates a pretty severe conflict of interest in representing both the landlord and the tenant. Dual agency is when the same commercial real estate brokerage represents both sides to a commercial uh, transaction. For example, one agent in the brokerage will represent the landlord, while another agent in that same brokerage represents the tenant. Each agent will then ask their respective party to sign what's called a dual agency disclosure form that allows the parties to continue to be represented by the same brokerage in the dual agency situation. Negotiating a commercial real estate transaction is by nature some designed to be adversarial, not adversarial in a bad way necessarily, but adversarial in a, in a way where both sides are advocating for the best deal they can get for their client. It's difficult to grasp how this can happen within a same brokerage in which that brokerage is representing both parties to a transaction. Furthermore, agents have duties to their clients under both the law and under professional responsibility guidelines. For example, agents have the duties of loyalty, confidentiality, just to name a few. Again, it is difficult to imagine how one brokerage can remain loyal to two different clients who are on opposite sides of a transaction. And the fact that landlords are in the business of commercial real estate means they are highly coveted clients because they have lots of repeat business. Every few years, they're looking for a new tenant for their space. So it will be advantageous to the brokerage to get the best deal they can for the landlord in hopes that they can continue to work on that landlord's business. Similar conflict of interest situations arise quite frequently for law firms as well. For example, they may represent a client uh, and do repeat business for them and then uh, over the course of time gets that client gets sued and the person suing that client wants to retain that same law firm to do the work. Well, in that situation, occasionally the law firm will ask for a waiver from both clients to continue to represent both sides in that lawsuit. But most often, law firms will refer out the new client's business in order to maintain the current or existing client's business. These types of referrals are quite common and uh, generally help the legal industry uh, as a whole by spreading the work around. Okay, so given the realities of the commercial real estate industry, the complexities of the transactions, and the potential for conflicts of interest, what can a tenant do? In their song, Street Fighting Man, the Rolling Stones sang, well, now what can a poor boy do except to sing for a rock and roll band? Well, tenants don't have that type of option available to them necessarily. But there are a few things tenants can do to better represent themselves in commercial real estate leasing transactions. Well, the obvious thing is to not go it alone. A business looking to go into a commercial real estate lease or even extending an existing uh, commercial real estate lease should get representation. A representation should include legal help, perhaps accounting help, depending on the size of the deal, and brokerage help. Since you've reached this point in the presentation, you should probably know by now that dual agency is not the best way to handle tenant representation. You want somebody who's going to be an arm's length advocator on your behalf as a tenant. You do not want somebody who's working in the same brokerage as the person who's representing the landlord. And more specifically, 
a tenant should seek out a broker to represent them who has expertise in representing tenants. The issues that tenants face are different than those that landlords face. For example, tenants are going to be concerned with having adequate parking, having adequate access to the site, understanding fully what rents they're going to be paying and when they're going to be due, um, and what their responsibilities are for common areas, things like that. And again, because in most situations, the landlord drafted or had the lease drafted on their behalf, the most clauses in the leases are going to favor the landlord. Therefore, it only makes sense to have somebody go through with a tenant expert perspective and negotiate the terms on behalf of the tenant. So there you have it. In this video, we provided an overview of the commercial real estate industry, identified the dual agency and conflict of interest problem that is quite common, and offered some suggestions for how to best represent the tenant in commercial leasing transactions. We hope you enjoyed this. This presentation is for general information purposes only. It is not to be construed as providing any advice, whether legal, real estate, tax, or otherwise.